Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this past week we had a lot of general Apple news, and of course we had releases of iOS 15.5 Beta 4 and other betas to go along with that as well. We'll expect Beta 5 or the release candidate this week, we'll talk more about that later, but this is your news update for the week of May 9th, 2022. And for those of you that just like general Apple news, this should be a good week for you as there's not a lot of rumors, so it's packed full of different news. And also before we talk about that news, everything that I talk about regarding a product or anything else that's not a rumor will be linked in the description so you can check out those articles further if you want to look more into them. One of Apple's display suppliers, BOE, has not been manufacturing many panels since February for iPhone 13. According to the ELEC, the display maker was caught not fully adhering to Apple's specs. They manufactured some of the 6.1 inch displays and maybe this accounted for the green and red display tints that we saw. However, it's unsure at this point. Once things are sorted though, Apple could still continue to use them for future displays as it's very difficult to source all of those displays and they could use some help from more than just a couple manufacturers such as Samsung and LG. The next thing is last year, Apple announced they would merge iCloud documents and iCloud data or data in general into iCloud Drive. That transition is now complete as of May 2022, and if you're having trouble finding your documents, you need to turn on iCloud Drive on your Mac. So you wanna turn on iCloud Drive on Mac, iPhone, and iPad OS, and then you'll be able to see all of your files. I've also linked the support document explaining the upgrade and transition in the description below. Some iPhones have been giving false alerts that AirTags are nearby. This is a security measure to let you know if maybe someone's tracking you or there's an AirTag there that shouldn't be. And apparently this is happening to some people late at night. It's unknown if it's a widespread issue, but Apple is aware of it and offered a statement. Per 9to5Mac, Apple said such alerts could have resulted from an iPhone receiving aerial Wi-Fi signals that temporarily confused its location services. A potential fix would be to go to settings, and then you go down to privacy, then location services, and then if you're on Wi-Fi, toggle this off and then back on. This can fix that and reset it. And according to them, he said that it happens more in densely populated areas and air tags owned by others nearby could inadvertently trigger those alerts. So this should be a way to sort of fix that for now. Maybe they'll offer a fix in an upcoming version of iOS. If you're in need of a longer Thunderbolt cable, Apple is now selling a three meter long Thunderbolt four cable for the studio display and any other Thunderbolt accessories you have. It's $159 for the cable though. So this is the one included with the studio display. It's not three meters, it's about one meter or so, and it seems to do the job. But if you need to maybe move the display a ways away, you'll actually have to buy a different cable. Now, there is a separate video someone made tearing down the cable, showing why it probably costs as much as it does, since there's circuit circuitry and circuit boards within each end of these, and then also a heavy shielding throughout to give you those incredible speeds with Thunderbolt 4. But either way, it's available now if you want to check it out at the Apple Store for $159. Now, iPad Air 2 and iPad Mini 2 have been officially added to the vintage list, according to Apple. Based on this, I would not expect them to have support for iOS 16 or iPadOS 16. So they're now considered vintage. You would need something newer than that. Maybe an iPad Air 4, the newest generations, or some of those in between. So unfortunately, if you have an iPad Air 2, it just won't have future support, it looks like. But either way, it still works with what you have on it. Also, if you owned an iPhone 4S, back in 2015 and installed iOS 9 on it and had degraded performance and an overall buggy experience, you may be eligible to collect $15 from a class action lawsuit. The settlement is limited to New York and New Jersey, but there will be a website soon with all the details how you could collect the settlement. And I've also linked the document so you can check out the motion in the description below about collecting that. So if you were in New York or New Jersey at the time of iOS 9, you may be able to collect a settlement for that degraded performance overall. So I I don't really recall having that issue, but quite a few people did. So enough to warrant some sort of class action settlement. Let me know what you think of that in the comments below. Tony Fidel, who worked at Apple with Steve Jobs and helped create the iPod, has a new book detailing some of his earlier experiences at Apple. You can see this here, and he was also on a podcast discussing this as well. He also founded Nest and later sold it to Google and talks about that as well. The book and podcast are linked below, and it's a pretty inexpensive book. It 
$16.99, and it's called Build an Unor Unorthodox Guide to Making Things Worth Making. So this is something I'll be reading in the future, or at least listening to his podcast as well, just to see what he had to say about all of that. Now, if you come across an Apple One or an original Apple computer, be sure to save it as they're fetching an incredibly high price at auction. The latest Apple One at auction is still up for bid and is currently at $270,000. So those computers fetch an incredibly high price, especially when they're signed by Steve Jobs, or it's noted somewhere that he helped create it. And he helped build some of the original Apple One computers. And there's not a lot left, so they fetch an incredibly high price. Now, the EU has plans to force Apple to change from Lightning to USB-C and also open up the iPhone to allow sideloading of apps and third-party app stores. So in the future, we could see that where we won't just have the app store, but similar to that of a Mac, we'll be able to maybe go to Safari, install a third-party app store or apps that way. This was expected to go to go into effect in a few months, but is now delayed until spring 2023. This is possibly due in part that it would take time for Apple to rewrite iOS to allow it and also make major your hardware changes away from lightning on the iPhone and maybe open up the port, change it a little bit, change the internals of the iPhone to allow USB-C like they do on their other devices. So it looks like we won't see any of that very soon, but we could see it in the near future next year. This past week, a new special edition Powerbeats Pro was launched in collaboration with designer Pariah Farzena. Hopefully I'm saying that properly. They're now available for $250 and exclusive to sense.com. So again, I'll link that in the description, but they look a little different than this, have a unique design and the regular ones are on sale for about $200 right now. So if you're looking to pick up Powerbeats Pro, you can still get them in the traditional black and different colors, but also the new designer edition as well. Some users of Apple TV are complaining when using Dolby Atmos that they're having some issues with it, whether that be cutting out, going out of sync, or just stuttering overall with the audio. This is an issue that apparently is happening to enough people that it's on different audio forums. Now I actually have a Dolby Atmos set up at home using an Apple TV and I've noticed some of those issues as well. So hopefully this will be addressed with a future update to tvOS also. So maybe an interim release or could be with 15.5. Apple is also working to expand passwordless sign-in on websites and within apps. Apple, Google, and Microsoft are part of the Fido Alliance and are working to make this a standard across platforms. It's a sign-in feature where you would, wouldn't have to necessarily sign in in the traditional password method way, but it would understand who it is by who's using the device and more. And there's a bunch about this standard and those features are expected to roll out later this year at some point. It would increase security and also help eliminate additional vulnerability. So hopefully we see this really added to all of these devices and make things even more secure than they are now. Now, WWDC 2022 is less than a month away on June 6th, 2022. This past week, Apple mentioned that you can apply to attend in person and watch the keynote on the screen with different developers and then meet up with engineers and more. This is now available to apply to starting today. So you'll see it says submissions open May 9th. And with those submissions, you need to be a developer or a Swift student challenge applicant and then you can submit your request May 9th at 9 a.m. Pacific time to May 11th, 9 a.m. Pacific time. You'll be notified of your status, whether or not you were chosen randomly by May 12th at 6 p.m. Pacific time. So that's available now if you wanted to apply for that. And if you're a developer and you'd find that useful, you can apply for it now. Now at WWDC, we expect to see iOS 16 beta one and of course, iPad OS and more. So all of those things will be available that day. There will be a new beta profile. So if you're wondering how to install iOS 16 beta one on day one, you want to check out the beta. They're typically very buggy, but you can be a developer, install the beta profile just like you would with iOS 15, but typically there will be a different beta profile separating iOS 15 betas and iOS 16 betas. So you'll be able to do that from developer.apple.com once the betas are available. And also this week, we're expecting iOS 15.5 beta five or release candidate. At this point, we don't know exactly what Apple plans to release, but I would expect it as soon as tomorrow or Wednesday. That's typically what Apple's been doing with a week to week release. If we see the release candidate as soon as tomorrow, then we can expect a final release as soon as next week. If we see beta five, then I would expect a release candidate next week with the final release somewhere around the 23rd or 24th of May. That's typically what Apple does. And then we'll move on to iOS 15. 15.6 betas and iOS 16 betas as well, all the way until the final release of iOS 16, usually in September around the time of iPhone 14. So that's usually what you can expect. 
And speaking of iPhone 14, production is getting underway, and there's been mixed reports this past week saying that the production of iPhone 14 might be slightly delayed as due to recent lockdowns in China, Apple hasn't been hiring more people. But then there was another report saying they're hiring a bunch of people to start ramping up production. So if everything goes as planned, we'll see them in September. If not, we could have another year such as 2021 or 2020 where they actually split up the release as they had delays in producing them. Right now there's severe delays with MacBook Pros, so if you order one now it could take a couple months before you get one due to those lockdowns and more. So hopefully we see those productions ramp back up and things get back to normal, but we'll have to wait and see. And at this time, Apple starts to ramp up production of the next iPhone so that they can make millions available by September. A new Apple patent suggests iPad OS 16 or maybe a future version could get a pro mode when placed in a dock and then the user interface would change into what we have with Mac OS. This patent sort of shows that's what could happen as you place the iPad into a keyboard dock. The patent was found by Patently Apple and shows what could be hopefully coming with iPad OS 16, although maybe they're talking about a future version or they could never do it. It just depends what Apple decides to do with that. Now regarding AirPods Pro, I hear all of the time, when are we getting AirPods Pro 2? And according to Mark Gurman this week, it looks like they could be coming as soon as September. He said that recently with new AirPods Pro, we can expect them in the fall and the current model has been on the market since 2019. So batteries may be running out at this point, may need to be replaced. And so Apple is ramping up production of the new AirPods Pro 2. So we could expect those in the fall, maybe alongside the iPhone 14 launch. Also, he said to expect a refresh of colors with AirPods Max. So maybe we'll get AirPods Max 2 with not only space gray and the current other colors available, but maybe some new colors also. So that with maybe a price drop since they're currently $550, but Apple often discounts them on their Amazon web store by $100. So maybe we'll see them come down in price also. And so that's everything with the news this past week, tons of different random Apple news, but if there's anything else you'd like me to cover in these news updates, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.